Sean Connery left the Bond franchise after his fifth outing in You Only Live Twice. This ushered in a new Bond in the form of George Lazenby. I've already talked about Lazenby's reasons for leaving the series after just one film, which can be found here. This left the producers with a headache about where to go next. Within the space of just three years, they were on the verge of recasting the role of Bond for a second time. They were also very aware that Lazenby's first and only Bond didn't reach the dizzying heights of Connery's films at the box office. With yet another new Bond, they were very likely to take another financial hit, perhaps worse than the one before. It's well documented that Connery didn't see eye to eye with Bond producers Broccoli and Saltzman, which contributed to him leaving the series after Yolt. One big problem Connery had was his belief that he wasn't being paid what he was worth to the series. The financial hit that Majesties took was a dream come true for Connery. With the series still in its infancy, the first attempt to continue the series without him in the lead role had not worked. Could Bond work without Connery involved? This put him in an extremely strong position when it came to negotiations. It's fair to say that Broccoli and Saltzman weren't great friends with Connery at the time of his departure. He'd been very vocal in interviews about his disagreements with the producers. The producers, on the other hand, felt Connery was ungrateful, not acknowledging them for their involvement in making him the star he'd now become. That being said, and without the benefit of hindsight as to the series' longevity, they felt, with pressure from the studio, that they had no other choice than to tempt back the man who'd made the series what it was. Luckily for them, they were told by studio head David Picker that money was no object, something they were going to need a lot of to tempt him back. At the time, Connery was looking to set up a new Scottish educational trust, which would help support Scottish artists, requiring a big injection of funding to get it off the ground, when the producers came begging. Holding all the trump cards, Connery secured a fee of $1.25 million, which he used to set up the trust, setting a record at the time for a salary paid to an actor. He also managed to secure a massive 12.5% of the overall domestic gross, estimated to be around $5.5 million. He was also given the freedom to not have to talk to producers if he didn't want to, and he was promised a bonus if the shoot went on for longer than scheduled, a problem on previous bonds. It didn't. Not only that, but he was able to negotiate financial backing for two films of his choice from United Artists. Ultimately, only one of these films was made when Connery's chance to play Macbeth never came to be when a rival production by Roman Polanski was being made at the same time. Connery left the producers under no impression that he'd be back for more. This was to be a one-time only gig. With Connery helping to restore the series back to its previous heights, it would be up to them to find a new actor once again to continue the series. Diamonds took almost double the domestic box office that Majesties had obtained, putting it in line with the Yolt's domestic total. Worldwide, although figures differ depending on where you look, Diamonds outgrossed Majesties by around $35 million and beat Yolt by around 5 However, when you take into account Connery's back-end deals, this puts a bit of a dent in the profits. Critically, it didn't fare so well, with many criticising its campy nature compared to the more serious tone laid out with Majesties. Not that Connery was too worried. He'd ended his involvement with the Ion Bond series with a massive paycheck and two films with guaranteed financing. He would of course play Bond once more 12 years later in a final F.U. to the producers. Thankfully for the producers, their next Bond would be luckier than Lazenby at the box office, and Connery for that matter. Moore's first would go on to earn $160 million. Bond's future was secure without Mr Connery at the helm, and United Artists' accountant could breathe a sigh of relief.